Hello and welcome to this video which is a presentation of my latest art project that I've been working on for about a year and a half and I call it Blinkensort because what it does is display sorting algorithms on one of these new fancy addressable NeoPixel LED strips that you can buy. And this particular LED strip has 300 RGBW pixels on 5 meters which makes it 60 LEDs per meter. And each of these pixels can be individually controlled by a microcontroller, which is here at the end. This is an ESP8266. And on this microcontroller, the, the, the sorting algorithms are run. And the strip is basically one big display or screen on which you can see the array and what the algorithm is currently doing in real time. I also added a small LCD display such that you can actually see which algorithm is currently running. On my blog panthema.net you can find an article on the making of this art project and also which parts you would need and how to solder them together if you would want to build your own. Now the sorting algorithms actually operate internally on an array containing numbers from 0 to 299 and the numbers are then mapped to the colors of the rainbow using the HSV color space. So in the beginning, the colors are randomly shuffled and then the sorting algorithm has the task to, well, sort the numbers such that in the end you can see the nice colored rainbow again. This project can also be seen as an extension of my incredibly popular sound of sorting video on YouTube and much of the source code on the microcontroller is actually from the sound of sorting except that the LED strip sort of brings the sorting algorithms into the real world as flashing dancing lights run in real time. I also find this a very artful use of these popular LED strips because these algorithms are infinitely changing and intriguingly complex and really fun to watch. Because each algorithm does actually something very different, this, ma this makes it a very interesting art installation with deep connections to informatics. And I'm going to explain each algorithm in short while they are running. So I'm going to reset the microcontroller now such that we can start at the beginning. The first algorithm is merge sort. And what merge sort does is make small pre-sorted packages, which you can see as these small rainbows on the LED strip. These small pre-sorted packages or rainbows are then again merged together into larger rainbows, which again are merged into larger ones until in the end, the entire strip is correctly sorted. Merge sort runs in worst case O of n log n time. Next is insertion sort. The left part of the LED strip is kept sorted, as you can see, and what the algorithm then does is take the next item from the right part, which isn't sorted, and moves it to the correct position by swapping it to the left as far as needed. And these are these white flashes, which indicate the movement of the items to the left. And since the items are initially uniformly randomly ordered on the right part, on average, these white flashes go halfway into the sorted part, as you can maybe see. Now, insertion sort is used as the base case and it is actually still a quadratic algorithm. The next algorithm is going to be quicksort, which is a really fast algorithm as its name maybe suggests. What quicksort does is pick a random color and then partition the strip according to this color. Smaller colors go to the left and larger colors go to the right. So it picked here some blue color and that's why on the right there's these blue and green colors, this blue and green area. And it then does this recursively until it is completely sorted. And well, that was quick. Well, it's also called quicksort, but quicksort is worst case quadratic and expected O of n log n time. There are actually multiple versions of quicksort. The last one you just saw used two pointers which go from the left and the right into the center. And this one uses two pointers which both go from the left to the right. Both algorithms are asymptotically basically the same. In practice, the left and right area, which goes into the center, which is called Hoare's partitioning um, schema, is actually a bit faster. The next algorithm is a special dual pivot quicksort. It actually picks two colors, and if you watch very closely, you may see that each partition operation creates three parts at once. This algorithm is actually a bit faster than the usual quicksort and is becoming a popular sorter in the Java world.
And again, the next algorithm is called shell sort, which is an interesting small algorithm. It is a generalization of insertion sort, but it operates by swapping the items a bit further apart. The items are still moving from the right to the left. However, the comparisons and the exchanges are gapped, and these gaps grow smaller in each iteration of the algorithm until each item is correctly positioned. Next one is heap sort. In heap sort, a binary heap is created inside the array or the LED strip. You can see the binary heap here on the left. On the very left, there is the currently largest remaining item. And in each step, this item is swapped to the sorted part on the right of the strip. Below the largest remaining item, there are the levels of the heap and each level is a power of two in size. These levels have to be updated when the largest item is moved and because it's a binary tree, there are only a logarithmic number of corrections it has to do each time. Heap sort runs in O of n log n time. Next is cycle sort, which is a pretty exotic algorithm. What it does is take the first item on the very left that is not correctly ordered, and it determines the correct place for this item by scanning over the entire array and counting how many items are smaller. This of course tells it exactly where to place the item, and it then swaps the item there and repeats this for the next item that came from that place. Now this algorithm is of course quadratic, but actually does the minimal number of writes to the array because it places each item into its final position every time. Next are two radix sorts. Radix sort looks at the binary representation of the colors, and in this case it looks at the highest two bits of each color's number. It reorders everything into four buckets according to these bits, and then it does this recursively with the next two bits and so on until everything is sorted. Radix sort runs in linear time times the number of bits in uh, a color. The second version of Radix sort looks at the lowest two bits first, and it is an interesting algorithm because it doesn't actually appear to sort the items at first. Instead, it just groups colors together that have some sort of similar detail, and only in the very last iteration you will see that it actually sorts correctly. The next algorithm is STD sort, which is the main sorting algorithm used by C programs. As you can see in a second, this is actually a version of quicksort, which however does not fully sort recursively. Instead, it stops and leaves base cases left over on the strip, which it then fixes by running one large insertion sort sweep over the whole array. And the next one is again a very practical algorithm, std stable sort, which is the second main sorting algorithm in C++. It is a merge sort variant which uses less memory than the standard implementation than the first one we saw. It also makes multiple pre-sorted packages at once and then it merges pairs of them together. Wikisort is another merge sort variant that requires only constant extra memory. This, however, means that it has to use parts of the strip as buffers and has to resort some items multiple times. And this makes it appear to do some very strange things. It is quite fast in practice, but it does have to touch the items more often, and it is not as fast as the variants with extra memory. Yeah, there you see it do some very strange sorting steps. Next one is TIM sort, which is the default sorting implementation in Python. 
This is an adaptive sorting algorithm and again a merge sort variant as you maybe see. However, it is adaptive in the sense that it tries to find pre-sorted sequences in the input and then use these without extra sorting them. However, since this input is like completely random, this, this makes Tim sort appear to be a very efficient merge sort, which does merges in left and right directions. And now comes some of the slower quadratic algorithms. This first one is selection sort. What selection sort does is keep the left part of the strip sorted and scan the entire right part in search of the next remaining smallest item. So it scans the entire array to determine just one next smallest item and it, then it moves the smallest item back to the uh, back here. It does this over and over again, which makes it run in quadratic time. So selection sort is like really slow. We're just going to have to wait until it finishes. And next is bubble sort, which is another very slow quadratic algorithm. So what bubble sort does is run over the entire array again and again and again, and looks at every pair. In case the pair is incorrectly ordered, which means that the right is smaller than the left, it just swaps them. That is why the smaller items appear to be bubbling from the left to the right, and the larger items appear to be bubbling from the right to the left. And again, this is a quadratic algorithm that should never be used in practice, but of course it's pretty fun to watch. So again, we're going to have to wait because this is a slow algorithm. Yeah, still not done. You should never use this in practice as you maybe expect. So this next algorithm is also very fun to watch. It's called cocktail shaker sort or just shaker sort. And it is a variant of bubble sort that sweeps in both directions. So on each sweep, it compares pairs and swaps them to the left and then to the right. And that is why you can see the items move to the left and move to the right and move to the left and move to the right if you watch very closely. So it doesn't actually appear to be doing anything. However, in each iteration, it does move the largest item to the left, uh, largest item to the right, sorry, and the smallest to the left. So it does make progress in each sweep. Again, this is a really slow quadratic algorithm, fun to watch, never to be used in practice, and we're just going to have to wait until it finishes here. So next is Bozo sort, which is more a joke algorithm, because what it does, it swaps two random elements and then checks if the array is sorted. Then it swaps two again and checks it again and so on. It is very unlikely that it is going to correctly sort now, so we're just going to have to wait until it stops. The next four algorithms are not sorting algorithms, but actually hash table implementations. In the beginning, the hash table is empty, and then an ascending sequence of colors is inserted into the table. Each item is placed at a pseudo-random position that is determined by the hash function, hence the array is sort of filled up randomly. However, what happens when an item's position is already full? This is called a hash collision, and in this variant, the algorithm scans forward linearly until it finds an empty slot, as you can see here. This also means that in case it wants to find the item again, it has to scan forward until the next empty slot in search of this item. There are also other collision resolution mechanisms, and the next one is called quadratic probing. Instead of a linear search, the method accelerates its search quadratically for an, for an empty slot. And that's why you can see these accelerating white flashes on the strip. 
However, linear probing is much more cache efficient and hence used in practice more often. And now come two amazing hash table variants called cuckoo hashing after this. In standard cuckoo hashing, each item has two valid positions where it can go. So to insert an item, both positions are checked, and if either one of them is empty, the item can be inserted there. If both, however, are full, then one of them is removed from the array and the new item is placed there, and the removed item is put into its alternative position, and, in, and again, this alternative position can be full, so it has to be swapped out again, and so on. And thereby you get chains of replacements, and if the table is too full, these chains can become a cycle and the items cannot be inserted anymore. The second version of cuckoo hashing that you can see now allows each item to be placed at three alternative positions. This allows the table to become much more densely filled and each item can still be easily located because there are only three positions where it can be found. So in some sense the cuckoo hashing is a lot better than linear probing, however there are three places which needs like three cache faults needed for each lookup of an item. Yeah, and we nearly have a cycle here, but the strip is also nearly full. Yes, and that was it. Those were 18 sorting algorithms and four hash table implementations in about 17 minutes. I hope you liked it. I hope you found the LED animation interesting. And maybe you see a little bit more about how deep and complex the algorithms are that you can see on the strip. And maybe you share my fascination for this art project. Yes, um, thank you for listening.